There are four types of on-court squash drills you can do, tactical, physical, mental, and technical. We're focusing on technical drills that you could do during a break, during early season. It's 31 days after my minimally invasive ceramic on ceramic replacement. 31 days, one month, post-operation, at it, November 12, 2008. Here we are, December 13, 2008. When you're working on technical drills, you really do need to cooperate with the person you're drilling with. So you're noticing here that Sean is taking it easy on me, playing the balls uh, within comfortable reach, since I have just had a hip replacement. And this same principle applies at all levels. Um, if you're drilling with someone who is not as good as you are, that gives you the opportunity to focus a lot more on your technique, since things will appear to be moving a lot more slowly. Similarly, if you're drilling with someone a lot better, you need to hustle a lot more. We've divided the drills into three sections, back court, mid court, and front court. Here we're doing the most basic of back court drills, rotating rails or rotating lengths. The key point is here to get back to the tee so that you're practicing movement to the ball, striking the ball, and recovery after striking the ball. How long should you do each drill for? In drilling of this type, whose purpose is simply to maintain your technical skills, you want an overall session length of maybe uh, 25, 30, 40 minutes, which basically means uh, five minutes on each section. So five minutes on the forehand, five minutes on the backhand uh, for each of the different drills. These are technical, technical drills, so you notice that for the hitter, which is me balling on the tee, there isn't a lot of movement. Because there isn't a lot of movement and a lot of physical effort, this allows me to focus on my technique, my racket work, my body work, my balance, stroking the ball properly. And if I was rushing around the court madly, I wouldn't be able to focus on these different things. While I'm working on my attacking skills, uh, the feeder can be working on their defensive skills. So you'll notice that Shona's racket is down. Uh, she's basically just using her hand and her wrist to lift the ball. So that's all she has time to do. And in those defensive situations, you need a very fast moving joint in the hand. The wrist are the fastest moving in the joints.
not quite ready for vigorous lunging to the front, so you can see that Shona's leaving the ball up for me. So this gives me a chance to get into position, and in a game situation, normally I'd be down a lot lower. Uh, my racket would be dropped more. I'd be using a lot more hand and wrist. But this does give me at least an opportunity to work on uh, the feel of the ball on my racket. Get the idea of moving the ball high when you're on defense in the front of the court.